pounds of robot, Mike will need 149 more layers that will get stacked, baked, and pressurized to create the hardened carbon fiber. Right now, for the first time, really just seeing what a massive project this is. It looks like Mike will be spending more time at the doctor's office than he'd like. A couple of days ago, Terry took his layout for the chassis to spec design. Now, Terry takes the completed CAD files over to Top of the Hill to meet with chassis wizard and owner, Craig Hill. Good, I'm good. As Terry and Craig go over the designs, they both realize just how big of a project they're undertaking. 19 hours of welding alone need to be done, which means Terry is going to need a refresher course in the fine art of TIG welding. I have not TIG welded in 15 years. It's gonna be a, learning, a little bit of a learning curve for me. I'm a bit heavy-handed. TIG welding is an electrical welding process used for light metals, like many copper alloys, or in our case, aluminum, and allows for very strong welds, which right, will be so essential for the strength of this chassis. Hey, Ryan. After watching an expert perform a few simple TIG welds, Terry dons his mask and joins in on the fun. Holy cow, that actually goes together pretty good. I guess it's like riding a bike. Halfway through the first week, with the chassis just starting to come together, okay. Terry realizes what a long ride he's in for. Well, we got about 200 and something welds to go. This is gonna take a while. Coming up, the chassis comes home. Way heavier than planned. It's a bit on the heavy side, but we got the job done. Will this spell doom? There is absolutely no way we can get this vehicle to walk. And later, it's the robot's day out. Will it walk the walk? Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Our team of mad scientists is examining the very foundation of transportation as we know it, the wheel. By attempting to build a six-legged robot that can carry a human, the guys will truly be creating the future of all-terrain vehicles. And they'll be demonstrating their ambitious prototype and the safety of an open field in only 10 days. To give them a leg up on this prototype, the team is using the brains from guest builder Hal's little robot to control their larger version. Up in the lair, Zaz is finalizing a custom drivetrain to work in conjunction with the brains from Hal's small-scale Rex to make the 6x6 walk. If you look at the video of Rex in action, it looks like it's just spinning those legs around crazily like they were wheels. But that's not what's happening at all. There's a complicated control mechanism that ensures that the legs are synchronized in speed and position, making sure that those legs hit the ground in the all-important alternating tripod gait. What we have here is a complete drivetrain for one leg of the robot. A motor, a gearbox, an encoder, and a power controller. So Zaz and Hal set up a test, integrating both systems to determine if they can control the movement of the legs. But since Mike's still working on his carbon fiber appendages, they're going to use a replacement. The classic two by four. Zaz attaches the test leg and stands back. They start off simple, first testing their ability to spin the leg. Satisfied, they attempt to control the speed and motion, just as if it was walking. Yes. It works, but Hal isn't happy with this slow pace. Let's increase the speed. Come on, I'm yeah. dying for it. It's alive. And based on this test, when Mike's legs are attached, the drivetrain should keep the 6x6 moving forward. It passed with flying colors. We got to the point where we were doing position control of a leg with the brains of the small Rex. We're in a good place now, drive-wise. But this beast's ability to walk is dependent on the legs being strong enough to support a 400-pound chassis, while also being flexible enough to cover varied terrain. So over at Dr. Carbon Fiber's shop, Mike has finished cutting and stacking the carbon fiber and is ready to move on to the next step, laying the stacks on the mold. The mold is a large cylinder that holds the shape of the carbon fiber in a perfect semicircle. They've got one shot at this. The stacks must be laid on the mold precisely, or they'll have to start again from scratch. Then we're gonna just start putting stack after stack after stack on the mold. You start to see now that these are gonna be pretty, pretty monster legs, especially when you consider what they're made out of. I mean, this isn't just like a slab of steel here. This is some serious aerospace-grade material right here. 
I mean, we could send this to the moon. Then it's time for the final step in carbon fiber manufacturing. The magic cooker. The autoclave. The autoclave is a large oven designed to slowly heat and pressurize the stacks. Okay. We're good, we're in, we're good. Forming them into a super strong material, sturdy enough to stand up to the pounding it will endure as the six legs of the all-terrain vehicle. Iron hole. The goal temperature is 250 degrees Fahrenheit. But like any good roasting, slow cooking is better. So for this turkey, the heat is set to rise one degree every 10 minutes until it reaches the target temp. As the temperature rises, it's gonna become more of like a fluid. And so all these layers will start to be able to flow together. And as that happens, there's gonna be all this pressure pushing down on it. When it gets to a certain temperature, the epoxy, it's gonna to start to cure. And it's gonna become really hard. With the legs in the oven, it's almost time for Terry's chassis to come home. With the base fully formed, there's just one more step before Terry can take his metal masterpiece back to the island. Right axle center line. What is left right now is to get the roll cage, which has already been fabricated on and tagged down all the way around. This is the final stretch. It's over after this. With the sun setting for the night, the last weld is completed. And a major piece of the build can now be checked off the to-do list. That was it, boys. That's the last one right there. Yeah, the last, the last one. But there is still one important piece of information they need to know before shipping the chassis back to the island. And that's how heavy this beast has become. They place the chassis on the scale. And it certainly brings the bulk, weighing in at 486 pounds. Much heavier than their goal of 400 pounds. But with no way to trim the fat and no time to rebuild, Terry puts a positive spin on it. Structurally, the thing is absolutely fantastic. We, we know we're not gonna have any safety issues whatsoever. It's a bit on the heavy side, but we got the job done. As the first week of the build comes to an end, the chassis rolls its way over to the island and the guys run in for their first look at the assembled frame of their advanced ATV. Oh, this thing is big. Oh, hey, Holy it, looks, it looks like a okay. massive vehicle. With his robotic sixth sense tuned in, Zaz picks up right away that something is amiss. It looks really <laughs> yeah. heavy. Uh, it's about, well, what did we figure it was? 480? 486 pounds, right? The weight has really got me worried, I have to say. Uh, we specified a, a maximum chassis weight of 400 pounds. On the CAD model, it looked more like 350. It's come back now, it's 486. That, that is a big difference. At 486 pounds, the six by six might not be able to take a single step. You could really have drivetrain problems here. If worst comes to worst, this vehicle might not even stand up. And if it can't even stand up, it's not gonna go anywhere. Coming up, the carbon fiber legs are put through the ringer. But it's Mike that ends up worse for wear. And later, emergency brain surgery is needed. It's dead right now, the brains are, are gone. Will this build ever come to life? There is absolutely no way we can get this vehicle to walk. It's the brain. The guys at Prototype This are out to reinvent the wheel by building the world's first six-legged, human-driven walking machine. Every vehicle needs a power source. And for a unique beast like the 6x6, a custom power system will be essential. So up in the lair, Joe is working on a one-of-a-kind battery management system, which he explains in an inside look at battery technology. Our all-terrain leg vehicle is electric, so it needs to run on batteries. The problem with the traditional car battery is that it's heavy and gives us a short run time. So I spec these cutting edge, brand new battery cells from International Battery. Chemistry is lithium iron phosphate. And these things are starting to be used in all sorts of electric vehicles, and they're really prized for their lightweight and high power output. The problem is that these are just individual battery cells, not a full battery. To make all these cells into a full working battery, we need to have a battery management system. That's a set of electronics that monitors the charging and the discharging. But these things are so new that we can't just go buy a battery management system off the shelf. So guess who has to build one? And it has to be really precise. It has to work perfectly. If the charging current is too much, these batteries could explode. If the charging current is too low, the batteries won't charge. And if the discharge voltage gets below a certain level, these things could be destroyed forever. It's been a lonely time here in the lair, 
but I have my first assembled custom circuit board. With his first completed power system module in hand, Joe now needs to run some tests to make sure it will work as planned. First, Joe checks to see if he can control the battery's level of discharge. So it's hovering 3.7 is the max. It works! <laughs> but all that goes out must come back in. So Joe moves on to see if his custom circuit boards can charge the cells properly as well. Mixing batteries and electronics always has the potential for danger. That being said, the worst that could happen here is a bit of smoke and sparks. But never the toughest guy in the neighborhood, Jumpy Joe cautiously flips the switch. And to his relief, a red light appears, signaling that the battery is charging. Ladies and gentlemen, this is one battery that's getting a charge right now with my custom battery management circuit board. Big relief. The battery management system works. Now all I have to do is build 31 more. Help. Last week, Zaz and Hal conducted a successful test, which proved the combination of drivetrain and brains from Hal's little Rex could control a mock-up leg. So now, with five days left in the build, Zaz is in the warehouse getting ready to install all six of his drivetrains to the chassis. We're putting everything onto the chassis for the first time. Motors go to gearboxes. They bolt onto the chassis. Before long, Zaz has put on the finishing touches, powers up the first one, and it starts to sing. Beautiful. Filled with the sound of mechanical music, the guys take a minuet to explain more about how the drivetrains tune up. The leg attaches to this. Kind of like the knee bone. And a one, and a two, and a... The knee bone's connected to the... The thigh bone, the thigh bone's connected to the hip joint, the hip joint's connected to the hip bone, the hip bone's connected to the motor, the motor's connected to the encoder, and that's how the drivetrain goes. Yeah. And that's how it all gets put together. Huh? With the drivetrains assembled, the last piece of this jigsaw puzzle is adding the legs. Last week, Mike went to Finish Line Composites, where 150 layers of carbon fiber were bonded together in this huge autoclave. Slow cook to perfection. The legs were then cut by Dr. Carbon Fiber himself, much to Mike's delight. We got legs! But before the legs can be trusted to carry the heavier than expected 6x6, six six, they've got to be tested. So, back on the island, the guys run the legs through some impromptu durability tests to see just how strong the carbon fiber limbs really are. They ain't doing it because they ain't gonna make it. It's a leg vehicle! <laughs> But testing turns to horseplay, and the legs win. Mike gets fucked right off. So, I think that we've determined that the leg is plenty strong. <laughs> With weight testing complete and rubber tread added, Mike's ready to attach the legs to the chassis. It's an exciting moment. This is when we bring the legs over and I get to integrate them with the rest of the all-terrain vehicle. This is going to get dangerous. and We all have to stand back. We all have to be very careful. Attaching the advanced legs is no easy task. So with help from Terry the Toolman, they adjoin all six. And soon, they're ready to move forward. All right. The last leg is on. Ready to go. All the components have proven successful on their own, but with the chassis weighing in roughly 20% heavier than planned, the robot beast's ability to stand is still very much in question. We don't know right now if this thing's gonna be able to stand up. We don't know if the motor's gonna be strong enough. We don't know if the legs are gonna break. We don't know if the battery's gonna supply enough power. Now, with all the components finally in place, it's time for the first full integration test of the future of all-terrain vehicles. If everything on here works right the first time, I'll be very surprised. This is a really crucial test. It's the first one where all the systems come together. Everything's in question right now. The drivetrain, are the motors gonna be strong enough? The excitement brews in the warehouse as Terry uses a forklift to raise the beast up. Oh. Yeah. And now for the first time, the team can finally see just how massive this vehicle truly is. Once you get back and look at the, uh, the sheer scale of this thing, it looks mean. It looks like something that would be on, on the moon. And now for the moment of truth. Yeah. Yikes. But as they go for their first baby steps... Holy moly! 
What was Smoke that? A catastrophic result. The 6x6 crashed hard enough to bounce.